Coding interviews for software engineers can be the most fun, but also the most challenging part of your interview process. In this video, I'll talk about the five most common technical interview types, explain why they are done and how you can prepare best, and I will give you a few links to resources that you can use to prepare later. If you already know which interview you need to prepare for, you can use the chapters on this video to jump to the part which is most relevant to you. In every chapter, I will explain the interview type and what is most important in this step. I obviously can't cover everything, but in my worksheet, I left a few links you can use to dive deeper and prepare for your interview. There are mainly five types of interviews I will talk about in this video. The first is the take home challenge. The second is the technical Q&A and trivia questions. The third is the coding challenge or pair programming challenges. The fourth is a system design interview. And the last is whiteboarding or lead code style interviews. All have a very different focus and need specific preparation and understanding from your side. One of the most important things is to fully understand the interview before you actually go to the interview. That is why you need to ask as many questions as you can before the interview to the recruiter or for example, the hiring manager. Try to really understand what they are assessing. You can, for example, ask about the interview type, like really clarify what kind of interview you need to prepare for. Ask about preparation material. A lot of times they have prepared emails or PDFs they can send you so that you get more information about the interview. Also ask about the tools and programming languages you can use during the interview. That is important that you can prepare a bit and get comfortable with your environment before the interview. The last question is you should always ask the recruiter how you can prepare best. Usually they know a lot about the interview process, about the specific interview, and even about the interviewers, so they can tell you what is most important to them. It can be things like testing, performance, or scalability, and usually the recruiter know pretty well what the interviewers are looking for, and they are always willing to help you. So just ask about it. Another important point I want to say in the beginning is, if you don't feel prepared enough, or the interview was scheduled in a rush, it's totally okay to ask them to reschedule it. It even shows that you take it seriously and want to show you at your best. Once you know all the information, once you know what the interview will be, you can start preparing and you will be already set up for success because you know exactly what you need to prepare for. Okay, let's talk about the first of the five interview types I talked about, the take home task. A take home challenge is usually a piece of code you write and then submit on a platform or submit via email. It can be anything from a small project from scratch or implementing a few empty functions or a piece of code where you need to find bugs or improvements and then submit it. Take home challenges are usually only done in the very beginning of the interview process because they require fairly little effort on the employer side to assess a large number of people in the beginning. Once you submit your code, the code is usually reviewed by experienced engineers within a few days. And if they're happy with your code, they invite you to the next step of the interview process. Usually in the next interview, they will give you feedback on your code and they will ask follow up questions on the most interesting parts of your code and you need to be ready to explain them in detail. So what is most important in those types of interview? I think the take home challenge is one of the easiest challenges because you have all the time, you can Google and you can write actual code, which is the closest to your day to day job. Write clean, readable and very simple code. Don't overcomplicate it. It's also important that you comment unclear parts of your code. Don't comment what a function does or why you declared a variable somewhere, but comment if you take assumptions or if you already know how to improve a certain part of the code, but leave it for later. Don't forget about testing. Sometimes you're not even asked about testing, but it's always good to at least keep it in mind. You can write some tests or you can write how you would write tests and why it is important here. As I said with the comments, it's totally okay to make assumptions, but you need to mention them either in the comments or in a readme later. What you also should consider is the quality of the code you submit. You should talk about reusability, performance, scalability, and security, and all those things you can put in the readme or attach to the email you're sending. And also don't forget to review your code before you submit it. It's like a PR review. Sometimes there are typos or you forgot some old comments or things you wanted to remove before submitting. As I already said, expect to explain every single line of the code you submit. It's okay to discuss the solution with a friend or Google or take inspiration from other solutions on the internet. But what you submit, you need to know 100% and need to be able to explain during the interview. But how can you prepare for such a coding challenge? The good thing is that this is an interview type which almost requires no preparation from you because you usually have enough time to figure out the details once they send you the challenge. Let's now talk about the second most common interview types, the technical Q&A. The technical Q&A is usually a more relaxed chat about your experience and the programming languages you will use in your next job. There are usually three different kinds of technical Q&A. The first one is about your experience, where you should pick a project and talk about the technical solutions you implemented. You need to discuss why you chose certain technical solutions and the pros and cons. 
The second is language specific trivia. They can ask you questions about the programming languages you usually use. For example, they can ask you about currying in JavaScript or to explain what an arrow function is in JavaScript. You know those questions. And the third is technical questions and concepts, and sometimes even questions about the fundamentals of programming. Next to the very specific trivia questions, that can be more general questions about patterns or different programming concepts to explain an observer pattern or explain the singleton pattern. Or for example, more abstract concepts to, for example, explain what solid stands for. And it stands for principle, single responsibility, open, closed, Liskov substitution. Okay. You probably know better than me what that means, and you also know how to Google it and prepare for it. My point is, you really need to brush up on the fundamental concepts in computer science. How can you prepare in the best way for technical Q&A interviews? The first thing you need to prepare is you need to have an interesting project ready where you can talk in depth about the technical solution you have taken. The second thing is you can prepare for the most common questions. The best thing is just to Google programming language, most common interview questions and then go through a few to brush up your knowledge on those. Even if you're a very experienced software engineer, it is good to go through the most common questions because it's very rarely that in our day-to-day -day job, we explain things like type coercion in JavaScript or polymorphism in C++ or you get what I mean. The last thing is I also leave a few good links in my worksheet about the most common interview questions and a few links that you can use to refresh your fundamental knowledge. Okay, now we come to the third type of technical interview, the live coding challenge. It can be mainly three different types of live coding challenge. It can be a pair programming challenge where you work on existing code. You maybe add a feature, you fix some bugs, or you get some tests you need to fix. The second is creating a small project from scratch. It can be something like a to-do list, an API, a storage system, or a stopwatch, etc. And the third is to explain code they give you. You can walk through how you debug it, how you would improve performance, and how you could improve it in general. Okay, I want to talk about a few general tips in a live coding challenge. The first one is start with the simplest solution. It's always good to just start with the most simplest and naive approach to solve the problem before you start optimizing and improving your code. This already gives you a solid foundation in the interview and gives you already a small success you can then build up on. The second is be open for changes of direction. Sometimes the interviewers interrupt you and ask you if this is a good idea what you're doing or they suggest a different approach and always listen to it. If they do that, if they interrupt you, they already notice that you're going in the wrong direction and they're just trying to help you. So always try to listen and accept their feedback. And in general, listen to the interviewers. If they start speaking, pause what you're doing and really try to understand what they mean. Ask follow-up questions and go into what they're saying because they really are on your side and they're trying to help you through the interview. And incredibly important is to communicate well. Act as if you're working on a team, you're being assessed whether you would be a good fit to their team or not. And communication is one of the most important parts of it. Communication also means that in the beginning of the interview, you take a few minutes and try to really understand the problem they're giving you. Nothing is worse to try to build a solution for a problem you misunderstood. Also during the interview, ask questions to get help. Sometimes you get stuck and you don't know how to continue. But if you ask the interviewers how they would continue, they usually give you a few hints and you can use that to your advantage. And at the end of the interview, take a few minutes to discuss your solution. If you didn't have time to add tests, discuss the testing, the performance and improvement opportunities. That shows that the code you delivered is obviously just code you delivered during the interview, but not code you would deliver in a real world scenario. So tell them what you would deliver if you would have more time. So how can you prepare best for a live coding challenge? The first thing is you should refresh your knowledge on the frameworks and languages they're using during the interview. The second thing is do a few projects from scratch. Usually we work on large production systems and we're just adding to a large code base. But it is very different to start a project from scratch. So get comfortable with your environment, with the CLIs, update all your packages and be ready to start a project from scratch. A third tip is, if you don't want to forget anything during the interview, where it is stressful and you need to focus on writing good code, you can make a list of things you want to focus on and not forget during the interview. That could be things like performance, memory, the cost of your solutions, maybe the computational effort or the testing, as I mentioned earlier. Just write down a few things you don't want to forget and maybe put them on a paper next to you. You can also use this paper to take notes. And the last tip I want to give you is, if you want to get a feeling for how such an interview is conducted, just go on YouTube and search for a pair programming interview. There are a lot of great videos where you can see how such an interview is done in the real world. 
All right, let's now come to the fourth most common interview type, the system design interview. In the system design interview, you are asked to reason through an architectural solution and build a very complex system. This is usually used for more senior roles because there it is part of your responsibility to gather requirements, to design a system, to think about the technologies you use and also to talk about the trade-offs of your solution. So typical system design questions are, how would you build Twitter? Or how would you build a YouTube view counter? Or something like tiny URL, how would you build that? The best way to prepare for a system design interview is to prepare a very clear structure how you go through the different stages of the interview. I found an amazing video which explains all those stages in detail, but I will give you a quick overview. The first step is to gather the functional requirements on the API, what the system should do, what is the expected output, etc. The second is the non-functional requirements, things like the scalability, availability, performance, and so on. The third step is the high-level design, where you talk about the inputs and outputs and start to sketch a high-level design of the system. The fourth step is a detailed design, where you start to pick technologies, storage, patterns, and how you process data, etc. And the last step of this system design interview is talk about the trade-offs of your solution and possible bottlenecks. As I said, a very detailed description and a step-by-step -step explanation I have found in an extremely good video I will link in my worksheet. So definitely take time and go through this video. The video is a bit longer, over an hour, but I really recommend you if you take two to three hours and go very carefully through the video and write down your own sequence of those interview steps, you will be extremely well prepared for a system design interview. So definitely invest those couple of hours. Let's now come to the last and hardest one of the technical interviews, the whiteboarding or lead code interview. If you apply at a job where you are required to do a whiteboarding or lead coding style, you need to prepare a lot. Usually those interviews are only done by larger tech companies. So before you prepare for them, really make sure that the job you're applying for requires a whiteboarding or lead code style interview. As I said, you need to prepare for them. But luckily, there are a few really good platforms and courses you can use to prepare. Because even though I'm sure that you can use most of those problems if you have enough time and in a real world scenario, what you practice is that you can solve them in 45 minutes with good communication and while someone is watching you. Because even if the focus of this interview is on the technical problem solving skills, your communication and how you think and talk through the solution is equally important. I know that might sound strange, but even if you don't finish the solution or don't come up with a perfect solution, you might still get a good assessment depending on how you approach the problem and how you communicate through it. I want to give a quick disclaimer. If you don't expect a lead code style interview, don't prepare for it. The preparation is very specific to this style of interview and won't help you a lot during your other interviews. So you would waste a lot of time. But okay, if you have to prepare for it, here are three great platforms you can use. The first one is lead code. This is by far the most popular platform. They have all kinds of guides and material to get you started and they have tons of lead coding style questions, from easy to medium and to very hard ones. Here you have to know that the most common ones in the interviews are the medium ones, because the hard ones usually require a very specific trick to solve them. And if you can't find this trick, you can't solve them, and it is not a good indicator during the interview. The second platform I recommend is interviewcake.com. It's a great platform to learn about the interview process, how you can prepare best, and do a lot of challenges to get used to this interview style. I used it a few years ago and I absolutely loved it. After going through all the preparation, I felt super confident during my interview and got a really great offer. After that, I even sent them an email thanking them for their great platform. On Interview Cake, they walk you through all the algorithms, data structures, and they give you structured ways how to approach problems during the interview. The best is that they explain everything in depth. And if you get stuck, you can ask for hints and you only get a small hint that can help you to go along in your solution. You can even choose the programming language you are most comfortable in to solve the problems on their platform. I can really recommend Interview Cake if you're preparing for a whiteboarding or lead code style interview. And the last platform I can recommend is AlgoMonster. It is also a platform with tons of interview prep material that can help you get started in your interview process. On AlgoMonster, you can also learn everything about coding interviews and they curated the most important knowledge and challenges for you to prepare for your interviews. Those are the three best platforms I could find when preparing for whiteboarding or lead code style interviews and I highly recommend you to buy one of their premium services to prepare for your interviews in the best way. You get tons of extra materials, explanations, and exclusive challenges to prepare for your interviews. I believe that even if it seems expensive at first, you will get so much value and do a such better job during the interviews that you will immediately return your investment probably during the first month of your next job. But as I already said, those are the most difficult interviews to prepare for and you need to prepare a lot. 
it is usually recommended to prepare two or three months before the interview. If you're not prepared for such an interview and you've never done one of those, I would really recommend to add 50 to 100 hours to your interview preparation time. As I already said, there is no real shortcut and if you want to maximize your chances passing this interview, you just need to invest the time. Those were the five most common technical interview types. Let's now talk about some general tips you can use in all of those interviews. It's really important to understand that the technical interviews are not only assessing your technical competence, but they are also assessing whether the interviewers want to work with you or not. If you are nervous, don't talk and just quickly code some solution, you might give the interviewer the feeling that they don't want to work with you in the same team. So even if you code a really perfect solution, they might reject you because of that reason. So a few tips I want to give you are, keep it relaxed, keep it like a casual chat. You can ask questions, make jokes, you can even Google things if you need to. You always need to ask questions. Ask a lot of questions during the interview. If you need to clarify things, if you are stuck, or if you just want to involve the interviewer a bit more into the solution you are building. As I said earlier, always try to fully understand the problem before you start working on your solution. This is super important that you're not misunderstanding them and work in a completely different direction as they intend to. As I said in one of the sections earlier, it is really important that you work with them together. Try to involve the interviewers and make them feel that you're working together on something. You can say words like we, how can we implement this? What should we do in this case, etc. You can also ask them if what you coded is already enough and you can go to the next part, for example. That will all create a feeling as if you're working together on the solution. Listen carefully. If the interviewer is speaking, they're usually giving you valuable information or they notice that you're working in the wrong direction. So if they interrupt you, pause, listen, try to understand what they say and then continue working on the solution. One of the most common mistakes I see candidates do is that they don't think out loud. Always think out loud and show the interviewer what you're thinking about and what your approach is you're going to take. This gives the interviewer the chance to interrupt you and guide you back on the right path again. If you are stuck or if you don't know an answer, say that you don't know and that you need help. Nothing is worse than seeing you struggle and if we don't know how to help you. So always raise that and say that you don't know. If it's a trivia question or some knowledge they are asking for and you don't know and you try to answer it, it is painful to listen to. So say that you don't know and that you're curious to learn it. Another important tip is slow down. Usually during the interview we're very stressed and naturally we try to do things faster. So try to practice to slow down and just do things slower. Maybe take a piece of paper, write down some notes, make a concept before you start working on the solution, but really slow down. And in all the interviews, once you come up with a solution, discuss the solution afterwards. Talk about things you didn't have time for. Maybe it was testing or the performance or some improvements you already had in mind but couldn't do during the interview. This is really important to see whether you understand the improvements and the bottlenecks and maybe the points of failure in your solution. So discuss that after the interview. That were the general tips I had for you. As always, I leave a summary of this whole video in my worksheet you can find under this video. I hope that this overview of the most common technical interviews helped you to understand them better and to prepare best for your next interview. If you have any comments or questions or maybe feedback, just write it in the comments under this video. I hope that you get the job you're preparing for and I want to celebrate with you once you got the job you dreamed about. So definitely write that in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.